for our initial queuing model, I set up a shell of the model uh, in Excel. It turns out that Excel is a very nice tool for doing models like the one that we're interested in doing. Again, what we're interested in is a basic utilization model. I'd like to be able to estimate the utilization of each one of our stations in our operator. And we'll use these utilization estimates later on to verify our simulation model. And so I've copied the processing time and arrival rate information just for part type A uh, into our model. And what I'm going to do is calculate the total time by summing the setup time, the process time, and the teardown time for the cut station. And so this tells me that each unit of part type A requires four hours on the cut station. I can copy this formula in our worksheet and see that it also takes 4.8 hours on the welding station, 4.8 hours on the shape station, and 2.8 hours on the finish station for each part type A uh, that I produce. So now that I have the processing times per part, I can convert that to units that are more amenable to calculating the utilization. Recall that the utilization is the time that the station is busy divided by the time that it's available. So in order to compute that, I need to have the times rather than in units of per part, I need them in units of per day. So I can easily get that by multiplying the time by the arrival rate. So for example, at the cut station, I simply multiply the time by the arrival rate and now we have the units that we're looking for of 1.6 hours per day of the cut station's available time is consumed by part type A. Similarly, I can do the same thing for the weld station, the shape station, and the finish station. So now I have the number of hours per day by station required by part type A. Now I'd like that same information for the operator, but we're going to have to compute that in a slightly different way. Why? Well, the operator is required in all four operations, the cut operation, the weld operation, the shape operation, and the finish operation. But the operator is not required for the entire time. So if I look at the cut operation, we know that takes four hours for each station, for each part, but the operator is only required for 0.4 hours for setup and 0.4 hours for teardown. So to get the total time the operator is required, I'm going to sum across the columns for cut, weld, shape, and finish, which says the operator is required for 2.4 hours across all four operations for setup. By copying the formula down, the other rows, I can see that it take that it, the operator is also required for two hours for uh, teardown, and there are 12 total hours for processing, again spread across all four operations. So to get the value that I need, I simply need to add the setup time plus the teardown time and multiply that sum by the daily arrival rate which now tells me that the operator is required for 1.6 hours per day in order to do the setup and teardown uh, across all uh, operations. So now that we have the time spent by station and by the operator uh, per day on part type A, we can convert that or we can compute the expected utilization by simply dividing the total time required by the total available time. So in the case of the cut station, I can take the 1.6 hours, divide by the number of hours per day that it's available, times the number of units or the capacity of that station, and that says I have 20% of the available time for the cut station is used by part type A. I can copy that to determine the same thing for the remaining stations by first making the reference to the number of hours per day an absolute reference and then copy the formula to the other stations 
and you can see the results. We have 20% of the utilization for the cut station, 24% each for the weld and shape station, 14% for the finish station, and 22% for the operator station. So now that we have the basic utilization model, we can do various what-if types analysis. So for example, if we switch from eight hours a day to four hours a day, you can see the impact on expected utilization. Or if we went from one operator to two, or one operator to a half, or if we increase the uh, arrival rate from 0.4 to say 0.6, and we can see the impact of uh, those, all of those changes on the expected utilization. And so in this case, what this tells us with the 132 is that if we have an arrival rate of 0.6 parts per day and we only have one half of an operator available, we can't keep up because the utilization has to be strictly less than uh, 100%. So in this case, what we need to do is either increase the number of hours per day, increase the number of operators, or decrease the arrival rate in order to get this expected utilization back below 100%. So what we'll do is we will just go back to our original version. So we have eight hours per day, one operator, and 0.4 for the <coughs> arrival rate for uh, part type A. So now that we have our the portion of our capacity model that deals with part type A, what do we need to do in order to finish the model for its initial version? Well, certainly we have to add part types B, C, and D because they also will require capacity on all four of our stations plus capacity of our operator. So if our goal is to estimate the expected utilization for a particular arrival mix, we need to incorporate that information. And you should try to do this as an exercise. So here's the completed version of our initial capacity model. And you can see that I've added columns in the upper part for part type B, C, and D, and corresponding sections below part type A, where I computed the um, requirements, the processing time requirements, just as we did for part type A. And I also computed the part mix now that we have the total arrival rate. So I have 0.4 parts per day for part type A, 0.6 for part type B, 0.5 for part type C, and 0.4 for part type D. That gives me a total of 1.9 parts per day. And then I can compute the proportion of each, uh, of each part type, which is what I'm calling the part type mix. Also, we can see the expected utilization. So these expected utilizations are for our entire uh, family of parts, part type A, B, C, and D. And as before, we can do any type of what-if analysis uh, that we like. So if we, say, double the number of operators, you can see the effect on utilization. Um, if we alter the number of hours available per day, in this case, if we work half time, uh, clearly we're not going, going to be able to keep up. Uh, and we can also change the part mix by manipulating the arrival rates. So in this case, if I were to increase the arrival rate for part type A, you can see that the part mix changes accordingly and that our utilizations increase as you would expect that they would. And in this case, it's clear that we would probably need two operators uh, as a 98.5% utilization is fairly high. So we'll come back to this model. As I said, the purpose of use of this model uh, is to do some preliminary analysis as well as to verify the simulation models that we will work on next time.